book in a bed. <laughs>course your favorite book podcast where we chat too much shit and drink far too much wine and surprise we have a special guest it's tyree i've been here before <laughs> i really like taylor being like i haven't been here before <laughs> i am so excited to be on my favorite book podcast i feel like i've well and truly made it honestly i can't wait <laughs> to just have a bev talk shit and get quite literally balls deep oh. into this book <laughs> it is deed in quite literally stress. yeah well um do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself oh, tell God. us where you come from where you've been much like these gals right here i have what some may say is an unhealthy obsession for books but look i think it's fine i've actually known georgia for what what would you say 10 years now i think it's almost God, 11 it feels like a lifetime mm. we actually went to school together so you know, back in the days when my favourite things to read were fanfics on Wattpad. Wattpad, yep. Back in the day. If you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. If you know, you know. And look, being best friends with Georgia, it only makes sense that my favourite genres are a mix between fantasy and just pure porn. So, <laughs> which kind of, kind of makes it perfect for being on today's episode because what better episode to be on than when we're covering... A dirty little smart buster based on a story we all kind of grew up on, mm. grew up around as kids. So mm. I think it's quite fitting. Ellie is still yeah. dealing with that because she has children. <sighs> that yeah, just, just <laughs> that sentence. A dirty little smart buster based on a book that we all grew up on. <laughs> yeah. We're here to traumatise you over Winnie the Pooh, now <sighs> Peter Pan. What other childhood trauma are we coming from? What's going to be next? Let's see what where the night takes yeah. us, really. So we're having a bit of a break from our Throne of Glass reread, much to our dismay because we're all balls deep in and we're obsessed with it. Don't even look at me. I knew that was coming. Taylor has stopped oh, at Taylor. Queen of Shadows. How can you I'm stop? 18, am I 18 chapters in? Yeah. No, okay. I am. I have to get back into it and I will. I believe I want to fucking see it. It's, right, been, it's been a while. Nonetheless. We're back. Yes, we're going to do a smart buster in the meantime. Um, so we are covering The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. It's basically a spicy Peter Pan retelling. We're all happy to be here. And what's everyone drinking? I am drinking Never Never Gin. You know, for like Neverland. Never oh. Neverland. Oh. Never Never Look Gin. At you. Never no, Never. Never Never Have a Whole Not Field. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah, um, yeah when it comes to light. <laughs> she can. She really can. Mm. Anyway. What are we drinking? We're, well, I think it's only fitting that we've got wine. Fairy wine. Fairy wine. I think that's just fitting. Beautiful. I, oh I also God. have wine, but it is in the form of a can this week. I love Just it. trying something new, trying something different. We're here for it. This is apparently 1.7 standard drinks. Oh. So, oh, and I have eight. Yeah. Can I get me one of those? You have eight of them. Oh, I do. It's going to be fantastic. Oh, that's what kind of night it's going to be. It's going to mm -hmm. be like Ellie on vodka all over again. It oh. really will be. For those of you listening and watching, which is all of you, so that's fine. We've all had a really shit day slash week. So, and it's a public holiday tomorrow. R.I.P. Lizzie. So we're here to get fucked up. <laughs> no one is surprised. Anyway, how did we all feel about the book? What was everyone's vibe? As per usual, I had no idea where we were going with this book, went in completely blind and was just down for, like, the escape to Neverland because I was like, lols, it's cool. Was I expecting the parental abuse? No. I really hope that gets explored <laughs> in further books, but, I mean, like, it feels like it should be, but, I mean, that's if that's my takeaway, I feel like I'm well cooked. Was I expecting <laughs> that many point of views? Again, no, but it made the story easier to follow, so I was okay with it. Was I, again, uncomfortable with the distance between two brothers, Peanut, when they were fucking the same chick? Absolutely. Either yeah. way, very much still keen for book two. It was just a good joyride. Right. So when Gog told me this was a sexy Peter Pan book, I was deeply, deeply <laughs> concerned and disturbed, <laughs> but not surprised. But if smart oh books are on a scale and we have fucking your uncle and cousin simultaneously down one end and Poppy Danforth wearing a blue wig down the other, <laughs> this comfortably sat in the middle. Mm. 
except for when the twins had her on a spit roast. But there was no time crunch. They could have taken turns. It was all just <laughs> too close for comfort, especially with the literal, like, brother encouragement as it yes. was happening. Like, mm, it wasn't necessary. This isn't a sporting game. It, oh, okay. <laughs> all in all, it was an easy read. It, it did its job, and it was far enough removed from the actual Peter Pan that I remain able to read that story to my children. So, <laughs> success. I'm, I'm very happy for you. <laughs> well, that's good. We're lucky Thank that God we didn't that. totally fucking ruin this for you. Did I like this book? Yes. Will I read the next one? Also, yes. <laughs> was it a perfect read? Absolutely not. <laughs> However, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. And it ticked all my boxes, you know, the vibe, like every hole is a goal. We love that. <laughs> and I also really love a dual POV. I feel, I love it. I love it deep in my soul. And I also really liked Winnie as well. She was like, fuck it up. And also like, fuck me up, please. Like, please. That's what she wanted. It she and me. Li- <laughs> fuck it and fuck, fuck me. me. <laughs> and also fuck all of you. <laughs> and everyone else just fuck me. <laughs> Literally. At the same time, preferably. All at once, every hole. And then stare <laughs> deeply into your brother's eyes and give him words of <laughs> and <you> do it. <laughs> <laughs> Much like everyone else, I went into this book pretty blind as well. Like I knew it was a dark retelling of Peter Pan, but I also don't think I was truly prepared for what was to come or who was to come over and over. Over and over. You think it's going to end? No. And again, and again. But I did actually, I did like it. I feel like it was quick, easy to read. Was I deeply disturbed at times? 100%. Yes. But yeah, will I be reading the next book? Yes. And I actually already have, but I, yeah. And look, it just, it keeps going. It really does. But I am enjoying it. Fuck it up. Fuck it up. So we begin and we're starting off in the point of view of Winnie Darling. And the name is just too similar to Winnie the Pooh. And we all now have (laughs) some deep seated trauma associated with that name. Thanks to Sinner and the thick ropes of (laughs) Ejaculate. 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 She's having sex with the star quarterback, even though she's two years out of high school and like the majority of men, he's just not quite hitting the mark. Sexually, if that's not clear, that was not meant in a football way. I do realise there was a pun involved there. Don't make football jokes. I don't make football. I have no idea what we're doing. We don't do that. Okay. Well, for anyone else out there who got the pun, it wasn't meant in that way. But anyway, (laughs) it's her 18th birthday and every darling woman has disappeared on this day before her. They sometimes return in a day or a week or a month. But when they do return, they are, well, a bit fucked up, really. Wendy is her great great grandmother so what queen elizabeth is to oh she doesn't have great great grandchildren just great grandchildren oh, i'm sorry i'm trying to bring tide all back together and it's just not <laughs> <laughs> we're making it relevant <laughs> we are to current times queen elizabeth was not fucked by peter pan so we'll just <laughs> we'll just take her out of the equation for this book. queen lizzie oh god queen lizzie's anyway. getting dizzy <laughs> oh, she's getting real dizzy. She's got yeah. all her crevices filled by all those lost boys. Oh, God. Queen Lizzie. <laughs> Why is it we've Feel made it. jokes about Russia before, but we make a joke about the Queen and I'm like, they're going to get us. Who? <laughs> 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 Andrew Painting. just pops up in the corner and he's like, damn it, you're not 15. <laughs> <laughs> Charles oh. just appears and he's like, I'll be your tampon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my good Lord. So it's not Lizzie, it's Wendy. She is her great-great-grandmother, and we get this quote, I am dead inside. No, oh, it's relatable. And so <laughs> fucking bored. And the only thing I have to look forward to is being kidnapped by a myth. Happy fucking birthday to me. Ooh. Look, I think this is one of the moments, like throughout the book, I would say this is the one time I really could relate. The other times, <laughs> questionable decisions, but... You don't want many penises in your crevices? I mean, look, You don't want on the two day. brothers spit roasting you and making just, dramatic yeah, eye look, contact? Look. Real brothers no, probably would. come when they stare <laughs> each other in the eyes. <laughs> Real brothers come together with one another. 
<laughs> Holding that's, hands that's as they thrust simultaneously. <laughs> That's true brotherhood right there, I say. It is. You're not real <laughs> brothers unless you've done that. Family bonding. Mm. Anyway, when Winnie gets home, her mother is a freaking out. She's like, oh, my God, I thought he took you. She mutters things about pirates, lost boys, fairies, and she's having nightmares, and she mentions Peter Pan. Winnie's like, what the fuck is going on? And we get this quote, she won't speak his name when she's awake. But at night, when she dreams, sometimes she'll wake up screaming. Peepin! Peepin! <laughs> anyway, <laughs> mum has been hospitalised seven, seven times. Like, calm down. Ugh. They say she's schizophrenic, just like grandma and great-grandma and all the darling women before her. A legacy of madness that I stand to inherit. She? Mm. You know? She? She? Get it. Fuck it up, like. Anyway, mum's losing her marbles, basically. And, yeah, apparently all the darling women have schizophrenia. Her mother has boarded up the house so she can't get in. So he can't get in. She can't get in. Winnie, stay outside. She's standing outside. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Mum, it's <She's> cold. <laughs> She's the cat. She's cat. Winnie's like, wait, no. what is the purpose of this? I can't get in the house. Mum's like, you stay the fuck out. There you go. <laughs> Mum. Mom. Look, it seems like something she would do because I wasn't a fan of mum. Anyway. Yeah. Mum's mother, fucked. Yeah. She's boarded up the house so he, Peter Pan, can't get in and has made basically a panic room that has weird witch symbols and whatnot all over the place. And she's just, she's fucked. Yeah. She's basically And not fucked. like, when we say witch symbols, it's not just like some rose quartz in the corner and like a little dream <laughs> catcher. She's, there's like blood runes on the walls. <laughs> Yes, it next level. Just, it's like Nehemia. She's doing a. She's doing oh, a magic it's, thing. It's too soon. It's too soon. In all this, mo- like all this mumbo jumbo and rose quartz up your anus, I do appreciate that Winnie's fear of losing herself isn't really the like the physical kidnapping that she's facing. It's like she doesn't believe that's fully real, but she's more scared of losing her autonomy and going crazy, schizophrenic crazy, and I thought that was really interesting. I quite enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. Her mother tells her briefly because apparently she can't release a bunch of info unless it's close to a full moon. We don't really know why. She basically says that she remembers the sand on the island, which apparently is where he t- he takes them. Basically, he thinks that the darlings can help him with issues he's having with his magic, apparently. We're all like, sure, okay, whatever. They end up falling asleep in said uh, panic room, the one with the uh, ejaculate symbols on the wall, ceiling, mm. and all around. But our girl gets up to get some medication. She needs her drugs. That's what she needs. But she hears the front door creak, and we're all like, wow, mm. no one is shocked what by is this. Who is it going to be? Yeah. I have no clue. No one is shocked by this. It's no. just a Mormon. Uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> just knocking on the door. Have you heard about our <laughs> Savior, Lord Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no one is surprised by these shocking turn of events. She rushes back to the room, but of course it is too late. He is right behind her. She's like, so mum isn't crazy. This is interesting. And we get this description. Silver rings on his fingers reflect the flame. Dark tattoos cover his hands. There are several strips of string and leather tied around his wrists. He's tall, broad-shouldered, and wearing a long coat with a stiff collar that stands up around his sharp jaw. Even though his body is hidden beneath the coat, I can tell he's covered with muscle by the mere suggestion of his biceps. I'm attracted. Oh, no. And then he's like, yoink, and just takes her and runs. You're coming home with me. He's wearing a long coat, but you can see the suggestion of his bicep. How? He's wearing a coat that's actually slightly too small, so it's really fitted. <laughs> he can't, he can't actually. Well, well there goes me thinking, oh, yeah, hot. I'm like, yeah, nah, look. <laughs> His shoulder size movement. Up, size up. I think you need a bigger size, babe. His he, shoulder oh, movement is actually up. quite restricted. <laughs> <laughs> if he makes any sudden movements, it will rip. So and it, it creaks. Like, like <laughs> you hear it's like actually ripping. a long pleather French coat. He looks like he's stepped out of the Matrix. <laughs> Neo, this 
Pixies in the Matrix. <laughs> anyway, yes! I um, can see that. I can see that. Fuck it up. Next chapter, we are in Peter Pan's view. And we get this quote as he yeets Winnie over his shoulder, which is, she's light as a feather. Her rib bones are sharp enough to hurt. This darling is not well. Perhaps her spiderweb cracks mean she'll be easier to break open. That's alarming. Seems like a problem. Uh, um, extremely alarming. Right. Well, we're learning that Peter is sick. He has myeloid type 2 leukemia and he has not much longer left <laughs> in his world. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is his make-a-wish. Oh, my God. For those that are video and I guess audio as well, Ellie has had to step away from our recording. We hope she will join us at some stage throughout the rest of this, but you have Bryony, Georgia and Taylor for the rest of this episode. All right. So we've left Make-A-Wish and we've now on to this. We get some info about why Peter Pan kidnaps the darling women and we get this quote, which is, this one has to be the one. I don't know what happens if she isn't. I am this island. It won't survive without me. We're like, oh, interesting. Something's wrong. We learn that there are a bunch of lost boys, but the main ones are Vane and the twins, Cass and Bash. The twins and Peter take Winnie up to a room and lock her basically into a bed in Neverland. And apparently they have this rule that they don't fuck darlings because that is what got them into this mess or some shit. They just break them instead of fucking them. So that seems super good. (laughs) That seems like... Even better. Yeah. Even better. They're like, we do not break their beds. We break their souls and their spirits. We do not break their backs. We just break their minds. We don't break their minds. We just don't break their spines. We break their minds. <laughs> Which, I mean, this is exactly what they're about to do, is break their one and only rule, but that's exactly fine. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. So that's fine. The next chapter we jump into Winnie's POV, and we get descriptions of Cass when Winnie wakes up which is his skin is the colour of the bright side of a blood moon and black tattoos run over his bare chest. All of the lines are precise and symmetrical on both sides of his body. They start at his neck and travel like a labyrinth over the rest of him, disappearing beneath the waistband of his ripped black jeans. He is a vision of dark virility. AKA, he's hot as shit. He's all dark hair than he's out of fuck you. That's basically it. That's basically it. We then get this description of Bash, which is, it's like I'm seeing double, except this guy's dark hair is cut much shorter and fans over his head in waves. The tattoos are exactly the same, though, from what I can tell. So Winnie gets to figure out that she is somewhere by the sea because she can hear these waves crashing, and she also finds out that the twins are the nice ones out of the group. And we get this quote, They could take me easily in any way they wanted. Fighting them would be like fighting the ocean. Pointless futile but why would i they look like they'd be a wild ride i lick my lips and bash's nostrils flare as his attention wanders to my mouth when you grow up around prostitutes you learn a thing or two about tricks mine has always been setting hooks oh so then she meets Vane, and we get this quote the scar the eyes three long (laughs) jacket scars cut his face in half diagonally from one temple to his jaw. It's changed his gaze. One eye is bright violet, the other pure black. He uses his magic on her. She feels absolute terror, and when he switches it off, she's like, what the fuck just happened? Thane's like, bring her out. So the twins unbuckle her cuffs, and then we get the quotes, we promise we won't bite. Not yet anyway i'm unhinged that man they they want a piece so then we are in bash's point of view and apparently he is like a chef he loves cooking and we get this insight into the dynamics of the group which is we all play our parts in this and my twin has always been the gentle tour guide he's better at playing nice than the rest of us he's more like our father in that way i got our mother's thirst for blood I don't like to watch a darling cry, but I love to watch them bleed. Whoa. That, that's beautiful. As oh, much as I love a man who loves his woman any time of the month, I think that's a step too far. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're it's we shark week. We all know that. I, <laughs> in fact, open up. And that's a shark. special sauce. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a 
bam, 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 bam. <laughs> and Vane is there and he's like to her, don't run. She's like, why? Then he comes up with this one. Because I will chase you and you don't want to know what happens when I catch you. It's so domestic just, abuse. Yeah, he's just <laughs> full on just throwing it out there. He's like, I'm going to fuck you up. You're going to be scared. You're going to be running down the streets and I'm going to be catching you. I'm going to be fucking you. I'm going to be fucking you in the streets. <laughs> oh, damn it. Okay. Vane goes again. He's just fucking people. <laughs> That's just classic Vane. That's just classic Vane. Fucking- so Bash gets very stressed watching our girl eat pancakes because she's doing it very sexually. She's like... <laughs> And she's like moaning. Rolling up the pancakes into little sausages. (laughs) Putting it in your vagina. Yes. He's very very jealous of those pancakes. And he's also jealous that Cass gets to sit very close to her. And he says to her, what does she smell like? (laughs) Cass says, like secrets and forbidden fruit. And what do you Mm. think that means? Mm. (laughs) That was... (laughs) It's actually just like the fucking no. old spice. She's just got old spice all over. <laughs> it's just Lynx br- Africa. <laughs> like, what is that? She's like, Lynx. So, <laughs> this next quote is one of Ellie's immediate no moments of the book, and it's with a lost voice, and there's plenty of lost pussy looking to be found. This quote, quote got me. Ellie's gone, look, you can fuck whoever you want and wherever you want to, but stop referring to yourself as the Lost Boys. It's weird. It gives off somewhat pedophile vibes. I do agree. And then we go from there and we meet a person called Cherry who Love has Vane. fucked or is fucking Vane or wants to fuck Vane. And Vane apparently fucking detests the woman. He's just like, get fucked, you little fucking bitch. She She's apparently great. detests not just Cherry, but like... Women. 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 Yeah. As the conglomerate women. Which again, if there's not at least like you can do dirty fucking things, but like if there's not at least some basic respect, probably just use a flashlight. Probably Unless it's enemies dance, to yeah. lovers hate fucking. Because that's different. Well that's different. Yeah, that is. Mm. I love that the three of us are the ones that go <laughs> randomly English and no one is here to I pull us into line I'm now. I'm gonna be ripping it up like <laughs> That is different, yeah, that is, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to clarify for our listeners as well, none of us are English. Wow. Well, so we then jump back to Winnie and she's really just wanting to be, well, she doesn't want to be friends with Cherry, but she's like, okay, well, this is the only girl that Children. seems semi-normal, so fuck it up. We end up learning that the Lost Boys are very old and this made Ellie feel mildly better. And then uh, <laughs> Peter Pan is a lot older than them. so We're yeah. okay with that. We're okay, as long as, like, there's no Winnie the Pooh, like, ejaculate on the shorts. Uh, No pyjama shorts in sight. Absolutely none. So we basically then hear that, like, the sun is setting and Peter Pan is going to be awake very, very soon because he can't go out in the sun. Because he's been having a nap-nap time and so it's nearly time to He's been having a little sleepy. A little nap-nap. A little nappy time. nap. Then we get Pan's POV. So we learn some things about him here. We have this quote which says, when the sun can kill you and pirates are hunting you and your magic is fucking waning, all you have left are blades. I, for some reason, I thought that said babies. <laughs> your babies. Baby. He's a child. He's, he's a child. The babies of Neverland. I'm going to say, like, you know, I love a violent streak. So I really enjoy the fact that he has this weaponry that he's just like, hello, I can slice and dice and also kill that pussy. So the baby, that's... yes. It's the babies. <laughs> So, Pan can hear Bash telling Darling to sit upstairs, and we then get this. If she's a good girl, she'll always do what we tell her. Oh, hard pass. You can. I'm safe. Fuck off. <laughs> there's only one man in the probably, actually, no. Okay, so there's a couple men in the say, whole world. A few. <laughs> <laughs> that if they told me what to do, I would do Char- it. Charlie Annam. Henry Charlie Annam. <laughs> You knew. I think girl. I might have a new person for the list. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy's on my list. Oh my house. god, he Tom is. Hardy! Did you see him doing jujitsu the other week? He's casually just out here in a casual yeah. tournament of jujitsu. Yeah. Just imagine oh you're going. God, I, you're like, I, I love jujitsu. I'm so excited for the championship, and it's just Tom Hardy. But the guy <laughs> I was thinking jiu-jitsu. of is I just saw a clip of Thomas Doherty who is Dove Cameron's ex-boyfriend. There was a clip of him talking about one of his new films and it's like got the English accent. English accent. it's very good. 
I watched June the other day, and now Timothy Chalamet, Chalamet. is up there. So Pan and Vane are having a bit of a chit chat, and Vane basically expresses that he wants to kill Cherry. So that's awesome. Pan says no because again he's pro life. Don't forget that. <laughs> He says, just give her a chase. Just give her a quick chase. And we're all like, kiss chasing? No. It's not that. So we get this quote, like Vane saying, she's a liability. Why were we keeping her around? Because they're talking about Cherry. And Pan is like, because she's collateral and the kind of loyal we need. That's why. Vane says, she was loyal when the twins were fucking her. Now she's desperate. And Pan says, she's desperate for you. I remind him and disappear into the bathroom. The twins were just a distraction. She wants you. So fuck her and keep her loyal? Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Okay. Absolutely not. We do not deal with that. Cherry can fuck whoever the fuck she wants. I support her choices. I don't even know this bitch, but I support her because she has a vagina. But just the fuck her to keep her loyal? No. Be honest about your intentions. I can't deal. Pan goes to see our girl and... Pan and Vane take her to the beach and they show her Neverland and how beautiful it is. And they're like, actually, just remember that you're never leaving. Um, casually, <laughs> don't panic. But then Vane actually has a kink for making people scared and it's part of his skill set. So he ma- gets in her head and she ends up being so scared that she runs away and Pan has to chase her. So then we get... <laughs> Winnie's POV. She has no idea why she's running, but she's currently doing cross country. <laughs> she's just doing full on sprints. She's Can't running relate. Hard, like she's never run before. Um, while uh, little old Winnie's doing this, Pan obviously catches her. There is something about him that is disarming, unnatural, haunting, like a barren tree growing in the middle of a dark lake. Something that very rarely should be and yet is. Just the sight of it tells you a story. I am indestructible, unyielding. It's hard to look at him, but harder to look away. Oh, it's sexy. Let's fuck him. I love, I definitely, okay. do, I definitely look at a barren tree and I go, I want to fuck you. <laughs> Yeah. So Pan ends up bringing her back to the house and he basically tells her that the darlings have stolen something from him a very long time ago and he needs her help getting it back. When she says that she understands, he says very essentially in her ear, good girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. So then we flash from the good girl, which just mm, tells you everything you need to know, especially when we're imagining Pan as Andy on TikTok. No. Mm. Why did you have to bring that up? So we're in Winnie's point of view, and we learned that Winnie met a woman called Starla, who, and I quote, baby girl, I don't do boyfriends. Men are my toys and I play with them regularly. Go off. Give her a TED talk. And Winnie wanted Starla to be her mother, but when they moved, she never saw her again. She basically says that she made sure that she was never a prude. And the quote is, and that's why I went through Half of the basketball team freshman year of high school, they all gave me things I wanted and needed. Sometimes a ride to school, sometimes food. Other times it was just the sensation of being in my own skin. Look, fuck that it is up. an interesting fuck, take. Fuck it up. I support your choices. Starla has a lot of great quotes. She really does. She really, really does. We've got most men don't realize this, but us girls. We have toolboxes too. Ours aren't stuffed with hammers and wrenches and screwdrivers. We have these. (laughs) She gives her boobs a squeeze and this then tapped at her temple. And there's no greater power than tits and brains, baby girl. A baby girl. Are you last baby girl? (laughs) Are you last baby girl? Are you last baby girl? Starla, can you adopt me? So Winnie thinks that this is her ticket out because Cass's gaze lingers on her. She's like, oh, okay, I'm going to use this to my advantage. She calls him to come and see her and we get this quote, I'm going to fuck a lost boy. Absolutely, darling, get it. About bloody time, that's what I say. Mm. So now we're in Cass's POV. And Cass goes to see Winnie, obviously, because she's called him in. Not knowing that, it's under the disguise that she's actually going to fuck his brains out. 
She ends up like crying into his shirt and like we're all like, damn, she's fucking good. She's a good actress. So good. And he ends up showing her a vision of like the night sky on the ceiling. And we get this quote, some darlings like magic, some don't. Some think it's just a trick of the eye, but it's all real. Neverland is full of magic, or at least it was once. Now it's dying, which is the whole reason the darling is here. Save the king, save the island. Save the cheerleader, save the world. Save the babies. <laughs> save the babies. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. So... Cass says that he is a furry. She is a furry. Like, they, they read. And Winnie is about to say that she doesn't believe in fairies, but he clamps a hand over her mouth and tells her that if she says that, a fairy dies. Yay, just fetus. We <laughs> learn that they are called Fae in Neverland and they lost their wings a long, long time ago. Okay, that means we're all just going to absolutely adore it because it's Fae. So I'm like, I'm already in, son. Exactly. I'm already in. So Winnie touches his tattoo and, like, traces it all the way down and grabs his waist. Before so she can cool. touch him any further, he's like, you're not the first to try to cause tension in the group, but we don't touch darlings, bros before hoes. And he leaves her in the room and goes to a bonfire with the rest of the Lost Boys. And he literally just like looks at this poor village girls and is like, you <laughs> suck this dick right now. <laughs> but he thinks that maybe like Winnie is working her way into his head too much because all he can think about is her and her mouth which doesn't bode well for the poor lover on the receiving end of his knob. <laughs> so then we go to Winnie's point of view. So we've got Bash walking in and he's like, what the fuck did you do to Cass? She's like, whatever do you mean, kind sir? I am innocent. I have done nothing. Mm. Next minute, he's got his hand around her throat and she's like, well, I said I was going to fuck a lost boy and I'm still going to do that. Bash is way easier to convince. So when she touches him, he's like, okay, yeet the panties, <laughs> sit on my cock, deal, yeet done. Him. Off you go, let's Specifically, get on. Specifically, he is like, bounce on my cock like he's it's like, a jumpy right, castle. You've touched me. We're, we're on. And as she starts to ride him, Pan walks in and like, Pan is like, hey, yo. Don't be stressing. Don't stop on my account. So Bash and Winnie just keep going. She just they, keeps they do that. bouncing. And then Bash comes inside her. And when she's on the verge of orgasm, Pan just yeets her off of Bash's lap and is like, get the fuck off. But not literally. Yeah. You cannot literally get the fuck off. No, you can't. And obviously Winnie's like, what the fuck? Let me get this quote that she is throbbing and wet and leaking cum all over the chair. She's like, well, I'm going to get off anyway. What the fuck? So she just starts whacking the pebble right there in front of him. No shame. And we fucking love it. And he's like, well, this is unexpected. But then he's like, well, move over because here comes the finger dingle doodles. And then he begins to finger her. And we get this quote, which is, I've been finger fucked by a myth. Amazing. I love it. Flawless. She climaxes. Again, brilliant, great. And then he's like, <laughs> we don't fuck the darlings. Stop fucking around or you'll be sorry, you little bitch. Then we get Pan's point of view. He's pissed, of course, because he also wants to fuck Winnie. Then Vane finds him and he's like, I can smell her on you. Like, what does she smell like? At this point, it's probably fairy comes. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm I'm curious to this. We're not the Lynx Af Africa. We're not, we're not doing not that. Lynx no, Africa. it's not the... Not Rexona, not the, the sexy bouquet, like. <laughs> so next minute, Cherry comes in to see Winnie in the morning and, like, brings her breakfast. And Winnie decides that she's going to use Cherry. She asks her which of the boys is her favourite. And she says, Bane. And Winnie is like, bitch, are you sure? Would you like to change your answer? Because that is the psychopath, but okie dokie. We move on from <laughs> that to some much needed plot. And Cherry Let's slip that she likes Vane because of his shadow. And then she stops herself. And Winnie is like, I promise I won't say anything, bitch. Tell me the secret. Tell me the god. Tell me the god. And Cherry is like, well, there are more islands than Neverland. Seven islands and seven kings. Every island has two shadows. One for life, one for death. The king always claims a shadow. 
it's in his blood, having the ability to claim it. Then her voice thins as she grows more excited. The king picks which one he wants. Pan picked life a very long time ago, but when Pan lost his shadow, he lost the power, and now the island is suffering because of it, and I think Pan might be dying. She really just, like, let it all slip. She was, I love your work, I Cherry. I was like, look, like, I'm not meant to tell you, but this is here it. Here is literally like, here everything go. that is happening here right now. Go. I'm just going <laughs> to jump that all on you. So Winnie understands now that Pan thinks that a darling stole his shadow, and that's why he steals from the darlings. We also learn that Bash and Cass killed their father and that's how they lost their wings and were banished from the Fae Court. We also find out, while we're at it, that Cherry is from Captain Hook's territory, pirates who basically want to take over the island. I'm just going to say it now, I want to fuck Hook. And it's only <laughs> slightly because my boyfriend cries every time he watches the Hook movie, like with Robin Williams. Like, that is guaranteed the movie that will make him cry. So that makes you want to fuck you're like, him? I'm you're like, funny. wow, makes makes Sam cry? <laughs> it funny. makes him cry? I'm turned on, I want to fuck. Yes. So then we've got this quote. Did Vane give you those cuts and bruises? It's really none of my business, but I have to know. She bites at her bottom lip before giving me a nervous laugh. It comes with territory. Winnie says, which is what? She says, Vane has a shadow too, from another island. I think I know what she's going to say before she says it. His shadow is death. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. So that's a lot to take in. Cherry says she will try to convince Bash to let Winnie come to the bonfire that they're having that night. Next chapter, and we're in Bash's point of view. Bash and Cass are fucking around. When Cherry approaches them, they comment on how Cherry is fucking vain, and we get this quote, which is, to be honest, I'm surprised she's upright and walking when Vane's shadow takes over, it fucking terrifies me, and he's not trying to fuck me. Yikes. <laughs> Big okay. yikes. Cherry then asks if Winnie can come to the bonfire, and the boys are like, Pan will say no, but Cherry is like, nup, leave it with me, boys. I got it. The boys are like, okay, yeah, sure. In that case, we have absol we absolutely approve of this decision. There's no other consequences. Sounds good. And Cherry is like, I'll ask Pan for forgiveness tomorrow. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very, very cheeky of her. I love it. And we end up finding out that, like, because the boys are having a little conversation afterwards. They're talking about Tilly, which is their sister. And apparently she's coming tomorrow and they're wondering if she forgives them. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. Bash wonders if she's really doing what she says she's doing to the darlings, which is very strange and we don't she understand it. What is happening there? Then we get the brownies' point of view. The who, chocolate fudge The brownie. chocolate, that's all I can think oh. of. Is like a little brownie. He and the land have also apparently laid claim to one another, a.k.a. he stuck his dick in a creator <laughs> and fucked the land. Now they are one. <laughs> Look, <laughs> weird side note. Who's fucked a crater in your life? No, weird side note. So I knew a girl in high school oh, who God. was Korean. Oh. She was a Korean exchange student, and she really struggled to say my name. Oh, God. So she called me Brownie. <laughs> well. Shout out to you, Gian. Well, <laughs> this is Brownie right here. This I am the, the I am in fact this the is brownie. The brownie. <laughs> this is the brownie. But anyway, we just yeet you past that. <laughs> we learn that the brownie serves Tilly, the queen of the Fae. She's the twin sister. Apparently, Tink is Tilly's mother, and she loved Pan once, but he killed her. Yeah, he did her. Devo. Yeah, and then we've got Tilly. She's telling the brownie to go and ask Cook where his loyalties lie. And that's kind of where we're left in that point. Yeah. Look, we're all a bit confused. We don't really, we don't know, really what's know what's happening. We're a bit confused as to where the fucking has gone. Cause, yeah. yeah. There's too much going on here. Yeah. So we then get into Winnie's POV again and Cass comes to visit Winnie. He unchains her and tells her that he will keep it that way if she is a good little girl. He ends up apologizing for his brother's fucking and Winnie's like, why? It was good. <laughs> And he's like, you were chained and kidnapped, tied to a bed. 
And she's like, which made it that much more enjoyable. And that oh. is my type of gal. That is, yeah. I appreciate your choices, honey bun. Anyway, Cass tells her that Cherry wants her to come to the bonfire and they agree that she'll come and that they'll deal with Pan later. It's future Don't Winnie's worry problem. About that right now. Future Winnie's problem. Off you problem. go. We get this whole moment between Winnie and Cass and the quote is His gaze wanders over my body. You look like you need feeding. It's all fun and games until they notice your fault lines, until they pry them open and peer inside. And when he responds with, didn't I tell you I'm secretly an assassin? It makes it easier to get into tight places. He frowns at me. You don't have to do that. Do what? Pretend. This island has been pretending for far too long. He turns for the door. Come out when you're ready. And then he's gone. I sit with his words for a while. The problem is I don't know how to stop pretending. I'm sorry. I didn't realize we were actually signing up for a backstory. Where is the porn? Where is the fucking? Yeah. Winnie goes downstairs and Bash is cooking honey suckle tarts, which is an extremely dirty thing to do to be cooking. (laughs) "Mm." Honey suckle tarts. Our girl, like, sticks her finger in the batter of the tart like a damn animal and bash is like good girls wait their turn and winnie's internal monologue is like my stomach dips and my pussy clenches and the one the only our favorite person mika anus is back to jump back (laughs) into the episode she has finished with her amazing mothering duties and she is back to join us we're happy to have you back let's go you're a goddess let's go i've got my child susie (laughs) yeah zeus is here to join the party also so the pussy clenches yeah the pussy has been clenched how hard do we actually think one could clench a pussy like do any I'm trying right a Kegel? Now. It's advised that you should do Kegels when you're pregnant to train your pelvic floor because you're going to need that to help with the pushing of the giant watermelon. So I read somewhere that whenever you're driving, when you hit a stoplight, you need to do Kegels. <laughs> yeah, I'm still, I'm still trying to do them right now, so... And that's why they're all silent. They're all just <laughs> clenching. Is it just Yeah, clenching. for anyone that We're is audio just only. Just clenching our vaginas. I can't help but just clench my, like, whole butt. Yeah, I know. No, this is very specific. And trust me, you will thank yourselves later once you've had those children because you get your girl has no incontinence issues. She's ripe. <laughs> I feel like that's too much information from her. She's <laughs> ripe. Maybe ripe's not the right word. Anyway, pussy clenches. She obviously, as she does, licks the batter off her fingers. It's sensual. It's hot. It's going. Bash is like, oh, my finger is also in the batter now. Might have to clean me off too. And she obviously does. And Bash thinks she's going to get him killed from her pussy power. Not the power of the it's, pussy. It's all happening. Not the power of the pussy. So we get this quote, he visibly trembles and i am soaring high on the power and the pleasure of being pleasing look my ego goes through the roof it skyrockets as soon as i feel like oh my god am i doing something am i doing something and if i am in fact doing something my ego is too big for this room i am in fact god superior (laughs) i am superior than you i'm better Vane is watching the exchange and he's like, no, I don't like this. I'm a step in. He comes to the batter and puts two fingers into it, making this batter absolutely filthy, disgusting. And these honeysuckle tarts will now <laughs> be finger licking good, if you will. <laughs> and he walks to Winnie and sloshes the mixture all over her mouth. She's not giving in to him, though. She licks it all off sensually again, and Vane is like, nope, not again. You don't get to beat me. So he pushes her face, face first against the counter and starts rub-a-dub-dubbing against her, you know, he's going downtown. And she's on the verge of climax when he just walks away. The game of the teeth. So she decides that she will not fall into his trap because she is one smart cookie she just Mm -hmm. acts as if it basically didn't happen and he is rightly pissed off 
So he just walks away like all men do. And Bash is like, wow, he never walks away from anyone. He dominates because he is a soulless cunt. That's not what Bash said, but we're putting two or two together here. (laughs) He then tells Winnie that he's glad she's here (laughs) to shake things up a bit because everyone is so broody because they're in a mansion full of lost boys mm. the gay energy is up there it's it's thriving they'd be it fucking is. each other every other weekend well it's almost bonfire time and sherry gives our girl a great great fairy wine and we all know from experience because we've all drank it before that humans act a little cray cray when they're on the fairy wine it's Elion pretty vodka. much winnie seems a bit more positive than ellie on vodka <laughs> and yeah. vodka is like i'm gonna sit the fuck on your lap i love that right. side of me okay bonfire yeah. fairy wine lots of people here we get this description of the lost boys being the misfits that never fit in and never really wanted to grow up cool great story maybe actually take some accountability for yourselves and grow the fuck up like actual men but you do you that's fine as the night <laughs> goes on winnie bear gets a little bit drunk some random ranger is there. He starts feeling her up. She starts making out with him. It's a it's the whole shit. time. Oh, oh, I do like, realize that a lot of our uh, listeners are American. For your reference, ranger means red haired. Yeah, it's red. Australian yeah. culture, honey. Look it up. Term of endearment. Yeah, she's hooking up with this ranger, and then we've got Pan's point of view. So he gets woken up by a vein telling him Winnie is kissing one of the lost boys, aka the Ranger. Pan is jealous. He's jealous of the Ranger. When Pan is going to the bonfire, Vane is behind him singing three, two, one, one, two, three, better watch out. Peter Pan is going to murder thee. Which that doesn't that. really rhyme. One, two, three, <laughs> better, watch better watch out. out. Peter Pan is going to murder thee. Murder it doesn't me. work. I'm sorry, but it... I would be like, I am as dry as the fucking Sahara Desert. Then Pan walks up to Winnie and the lost boy and literally just punches inside his chest and rips his heart out. And I'm dripping. Oh. I'm dripping? I'm concerned. So, we get this quote. So yeah, Pan so has just, ripped the heart from the chest of the random civilian ranger, and he's like, well, she needs to know. There are no white knights here, just monsters, and I am the worst one. That just seems like a bit of an overreaction. Yeah, and obviously Winnie's understandably very shook by these events, yeah, and sure. Pan basically, like, pulls her inside and vain and Kush and Bush and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Kush, Bush, Josh, Bush. It's like a line of vibrators. So he's basically like, what the fuck are you doing, Winnie, you little fucking cocksucker? And she's like, hey, I'm a hoe. What are you going to do about it, bitch? And he <laughs> does something about it, all right? Uh, he pushes her down on the table, face first, and then fucks her. So that's oh. awesome. For those who are back on video, we have lost Ellie again. She has important things that she must do tonight that involve her children, so we will miss her dearly. But she may be back on later if she if we're still going, which at this rate we probably fucking will be. <laughs> we'll be going all night. <laughs> we're absolutely chaotic today, so it could very well happen. Absolutely. So we get this quote after, obviously, Peter Pan decides to fuck her against the table. The breath he takes in is long and laboured, and it rumbles in the back of his throat. I tremble beneath him, not from the cold, never from the cold. I sense the rising fury in his body, the tremor before the earthquake. I have one second to breathe before he's spinning me around and bending me over the table. His left hand presses into the back of my head, driving my face to the wooden table. His other hand bunches my skirt around my waist and yanks down my panties. I gasp out, sending a fallen leaf skittering over the table. Goodbye, leaf. Goodbye, leaf. If you want to fuck the lost boys, Peter Pan says, why not start at the top? It's basically Ah! super fucking hot and he makes her beg to come. And we fucking love that for her. Absolutely. Like, anyway, that happens and that's awesome. Bash pulls up next after Pan has, like, came inside her. He's he's right in her. He's gone for it. He's fully stuffed her. And he's like, it's my turn. And Cass is like, it's also my turn. And he takes her mouth and Bash takes her fanny. And And that's when they make the eye contact. Yeah, Yeah. That's when they're holding hands. They're going at the same time. Brothers connected. That's exactly right. So we get this quote, which is, fuck yeah, Bash says as he pushes into me, wrap those pretty (gasps) lips around my brother's cock. 
We back that quote straight up with take it all, darling. Be a good Ooh. girl. Take my brother's cock in your mouth. And then they do like wow. this like, m- m- twin sync up Power Rangers <laughs> move and they come at the same time. They're like, go, go, go Power Rangers. Rangers. They're making the eye contact. They're like, let's go, let's go. Go, go, Meg- Power Rangers, go. A megamorphin <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> They come at the same time. It's awesome. Great. Just as you think Vane may also take his turn, he's like, no, like, no, and just grabs her mouth and is like, open for me, and then just <laughs> right in her mouth. Spits. Right in there, right down the throat. But we end up getting this quote, which is, I look over my shoulder at Peter Pan. His pants are still unbuttoned, but his cock is tucked away. He's disheveled and wild, the myth from the mythical island, not a boy, not man, a king. I don't know where I expected this night to go, but it wasn't here. I'm no longer lost. I think I might have finally been found. Damn. So that's awesome. Okay. Then we're in Cass's point of view, and the boys are discussing why Pan gave in to Winnie and broke his rule about not to fuck the darlings while Winnie showers. They're like, who knows, but that was a fucking awesome. Cass and Bash want to pretend that they're good, even though they're not. Our darling Ellie is not a fan of this whole situation. There was no need for the double prong. And <laughs> <laughs> it was uncalled for. I mean, the double stuffing is all right, but it's just the eye contact and the power rangers. Mm, the holding hand while, in sync. Back and while forth. they're twins. If they were like besties, you could be like, there's a little bit of gang energy there and that's yeah, fine. But no, but like, they are in fact related. That. They are related. They are twins. They were in. The, they shared the womb together. Now they're just sharing the, the the pussy together. Look, they shared the womb together, and now they are in fact sharing the womb together. <laughs> they are still sharing the womb together. <laughs> In just a different capacity. Yeah, that, that is very true, that is. So then we get Pan's point of view. Vane and Pan, they're going to go kill some pirates. And we also learn that Vane is called the Dark One. So we know that he has, like, the dark shadow, but, yeah, he's also called the Dark One. And in this scene, basically, they kill the pirates. That's about it. Chapter's done. Chapter's done. That's it. Boys will be boys. <laughs> boys will be boys. <laughs> but that's fail, you know, let them do their thing, you know. So then we go to Winnie's point of view. So Winnie has never slept in a bed with someone else. She tells Kaz and Bash she's happy here. They're like, well, not for long. But then <laughs> yeah, Kaz cool. touches a sensitive part on her back and they're like, what's wrong? But she doesn't tell him. So we don't know what's going on there. There's something that she's hiding. Interesting. Yeah. It's all witches and voodoo priests that were poking and prodding at Winnie in order to, quotations, save her. And we get this quote, when you're carved up by witches and so-called voodoo priests, pain becomes second nature. I would take the pain over losing my mind any day, so I never complained. I did what my mother told me to with slimmest hope that I wouldn't turn out like her. Thinking about all of this brings some of memories back and it makes my stomach dip. I know what she did to me was wrong and if I look too closely at it it makes me want to break down and sob so I don't I don't look at it at all your mother is supposed to protect you but it was my mother's desperate need to save me that caused me the most pain and anguish her love was hard to take some days I know we don't normally expect such like a traumatic backstory in a smart buster, but I fucking love it. I adored this aspect of the book. I wanted more of it. I hope it's unpacked in future books. It may or may not have something to do with the fact that I just watched Jeanette. Oh, fuck. I can't remember her name. The chick from iCarly. Her interview oh. with the Red Table Talk about her book, about her <laughs> mother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just wanted there to be less chit chat, more 
fucking. Yeah, get to the point. I was expecting this book to be so, like, dark. And don't get me wrong, like, it does have dark aspects, but I don't know if you guys have heard about the book called Still Beating. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have. That book is dark. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. I couldn't, like, really get into that darkness. But this one, I wanted to be more dark, more fucked up, more fucking. And I guess the trauma mm. does kind of go hand in hand with that, but I really wanted it to just be, like, the dare, where it's, like, every second page yeah. is just something new that he's yeah. fucking doing yeah. to her. So then we get Winnie's point of view. So she's waking up in bed alone. When she goes to the kitchen, Bash has made her croissants, her favourite food. He's whipped up another masterpiece. And Kaz has been out fishing. They decide then to teach her how to scale a fish. Because <laughs> our face was like smiling, smiling, smiling. Fish. Why? <laughs> and like, no. I like seafood, but that's me too, too much. If that was me, I'd be like, look, just get your dicks out. Like, <laughs> just <laughs> that's the only fish I'll be eating. <laughs> Anyway, so while that's all happening, while they're le- while she's learning how to scale a fish, all Winnie can think about is fucking everyone on a Winnie go round. The Winnie that's go round. <laughs> <laughs> She's not taking in how to scale fish. Kaz and Bash basically tell her that they are princes of the Fae. Which makes sense because they are, in fact, the Queen of the Fae uh, brothers. Yeah, it, it does add up a bit there. It does. It adds up. So we're then in Cass's point of view and he explains, like, a little bit more about their backstory and how they killed their father and they think their sister is coming for brunch. I'm super... <laughs> Cool. Super chill. Okay. Cool. 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 Super cool. chill. Yeah, it's awesome. So we then jump into Witty's POV, so we just yeet past that. And Witty's basically going around and investigating, mentally prepping for the Cush and Bush's sisters. Mm-hmm. Not the Cush and Bush. <laughs> <laughs> She basically stumbles into a library and finds Bane reading a book. Bane is like, go the fuck away. But she doesn't take the hint. No, no, no. She thinks that she felt like a slut last night (laughs) when he spat in her mouth. And for some reason, at this point, publishing thought it was okay to write the word sorta in a book. And it makes me really fucking mad. But that's fine. We're just going to skip past that. It's fine. She ends up straddling him and, like, just whips off her shirt. She's just like, Woo! See you later. Tatas in your face. But she's like, I can't see my scars. So I'll only, like, put my titties in his face. She also says at this moment, I don't want him to think me weak. Oh, God. We get sorta. We got this all at once. It's sorta. And then him to think me Week. The editor gave a grand total of zero shits in this chapter. Zero. He was just like, like, why not? Like, I didn't want him to think I am weak. <laughs> why Literally. is it me? This is the most bizarre game of chicken I have ever read in my entire fucking life. We get this moment where Vane says, pretty little darling whore, he says, trying to pretend she is bigger than she is. And Winnie says, vicious shadow of death, I say, trying to pretend like this is all beneath him. The eighth. And then Vane pins her to the ground and is like, you don't want to fuck with me. <laughs> she goes, I just want to be fucked by you. And what does Vane do? <laughs> he slaps her titty. <laughs> slaps her titty. I just, <laughs> love, <laughs> no, I just love it because I picture it's like him being like, you want to fuck with me. And she's like, I just want to be fucked by you. Thank like, you. Whack. Like, instead of just slapping the face, you're like, titty. <laughs> what, did, what did her memories ever do to you? <laughs> so we jump to Pan's point of view. Pan sees her sitting in the chair that Bane was in reading a book. She's like, hi. And then we get this. She smiles at me, pretty little darling girl. I want to drive her to the floor and shove my dick in her mouth and watch her gag on it. Wowzer. Why? Why? <laughs> Who says romance is dead? Why? <laughs> Honestly. Who says that? Why am I shoving to the ground and having a dick shoved in my mouth? Go on. He then takes her for a walk to prep her for tonight, the night she may lose her marbles because <gasps> the fake queen 
to get inside her head. He's like, instead of loosening her up, he's in her ear with his fingers. He's like, wrapping her up. He's like, are you fucking ready, bitch? You fucking ready for what's about to come? <laughs> That's it. That's all that's coming. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's all that's, all that's, that's coming. On. She is, in fact, not coming. <laughs> yeah. It's just the foreshadowing nah. of her mental illness. Yeah. He's yeah. preparing her, but in a different way. Yeah. Uh, as I said, Diff. in her ears. Look. All up in her crevices. <laughs> yeah. Then we get my shadow. I say, it was a darling that took it. Winnie frowns. Which one? It was a very long time ago, several generations back. I can't speak her name because I have forgotten it. There is only a dark void where she used to exist and all that remains is the feeling of her. What? Ben asks her where she got her scars and it's almost who did this to you, Troy, but not really because it's kind of his fault it all happened um, yeah but who did this to you it was you so <laughs> who did this to me. you it was in fact me <laughs> oh you that's so. a twist of events yeah um so then pan decides to take winnie to a lagoon why not set the mood he says that he took her mother there because the lagoon has healing energies apparently her mother was crying because of something we don't really know what we're unsure there's too much plot here for shit to make sense at this point so okay so just follow me for a second right winnie's mother is kidnapped by pan brought to neverland and mentally fucked with if she has any of the drive like her daughter she has fucked someone (laughs) in neverland i was thinking the exact same thing some penis is in her crevice. There is no way that she hasn't. There's just so, no way. Assuming there is no way she has not fucked at oh, least. Oh, no, I know where you're going with this. Someone in Neverland. <laughs> Delusional Winnie mother with mental illness goes back to the normal world to be a prostitute. Who is Winnie's father? I literally was I knew you were going to get to this, and I'm like, oh, God, don't even. Do not even. Because <laughs> there are too many gaps here Ooh, to there's leave a room lot. for error. There's a lot of holes that are left empty. I mean. And look, too many that, that are filled, that honestly. <laughs> a lot that are filled and a lot that are empty. I don't know. I'm just Who saying it. I think, I think Winnie has fucked her dad at this stage. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Oh dear. Will I be correct? Let's find out. (laughs) I knew you were getting to that. I knew it was coming, but I'm still deeply disturbed. So we get not. Surely not, but also possibly yes. (laughs) (laughs) But also I could see it happening. Logistically anything like her, like Like so imagine right now Winnie gets pregnant and does not break whatever Pan's curse is. That means the next generation of darling women will be kidnapped by Pan. If right now she goes cooked, realistically, who else is going to fuck her? She's already been well fucked. Oh, <laughs> Maybe it's God. Vane. Oh, my God, Vane is her daddy. That's why well, he doesn't want to fuck her. That's why he just slaps her titty because he's like, no, get that little oh, pussy away from me. Oh, no, no, I will no, discipline no, no, my child. Oh, I think no. that if any of them are her dad, then she's already fucked them because Look, fair, that's the way fair. it goes here. That really is the way that's it goes. Fair. Well, let's just leave that trauma bomb behind and we've got a quote. Yeah, thanks for dropping that. From Pan, the quote is, But now I don't want this darling to change. Usually when I take them, they rave and scream or they sob and quiver. This one is like a feral cat that wants to push the saucer of milk off the table just to watch (laughs) it spill. I just like that about her. Brave little darling girl, wild and reckless and always up for depraved adventures. What the actual feral cat is going on here? <laughs> what an air to fuck. Mm. At this stage, because Pan and Tilly, not Pan and Tilly, Pan and Winnie. <laughs> Pan and <laughs> Winnie are on their little walkie walk. Pan and Willie! <laughs> Pan and Willie Minnie. Winnie, Winnie and all of her willies are just on the little walk. <laughs> They're getting all this backstory and then they're like, wait, actually, no, there is time for the plot to progress. We must go to the next chapter. 
We're then in Winnie's point of view, and she is scared because she is about to meet Tilly, a fairy queen. Cass and Bash take her to get ready, and Bash tells her that the bracelet he has given her, like, earlier in the book that we just, like, ignored, has magic in it, and it will help her. She's stronger than the other darlings, and she can help get Pan's shadow back, and they're all very hopeful about this experience. We don't believe it. It's fine. So then we meet Tilly, and something is off, and not in the off way that she's possibly fucking her brothers, like... <laughs> <laughs> other books we have read. Tilly sits Winnie down and puts like hands on her head and begins to dive into her brain with the idea of retrieving the memories that her ancestors have had about what they did with Pan's shadow. But something is off and she experiences blinding pain instead. Yeah. While this is happening, we get Bash's point of view. And basically, everyone is not happy. Bash and Kaz apparently killed their father for their sister. Weird. But overall, the vibe is not happy because Winnie is screaming in pain. Everyone wants to know, what are we going to do about this? Just when you think one of the boys is going to stop it, Vane, the shadow of death, is like, no. He jumps right in there. We get this quote, I don't want her to turn out like the rest. Dazed and far away, like her mother, we made Mary a promise and we broke it. There is a single moment where I consider stopping Tilly. Damn the consequences, I nearly do it too. But someone else beats me to it. Not my brother, not Pan, but Vane. It's the shadow of death that leaps in. Now that fucking That moment, that just gets me. You know that gets what, me good. Vane, you finally piqued my interest. Let's yeah, see what you are. Go on. At this moment, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, slap my titty. So we're then in Winnie's point of view, and Winnie is in pain, but she's like, these boys need me. I'm going to save their shit. I'm going to do it. But then Vane is like, absolutely not sweet pea honey bite, and takes her away. And the sweet quote pea we. Sweet honey bite? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and the quote we get. It. I can do this. And it's then when some distant part of me gives into it when I decide to endure for them and not because of them that something clicks into place. Basically, we end the chapter with Vane getting into bed next to her and makes her go to sleep and gives her cuddles. It's super very cute. We love that for her. I and now we're in Winnie's. And Winnie's in a dream and she sees someone who looks like Tilly but isn't, a.k.a. it's Tinkerbell. She kills a darling and then hides something in her suitcase, a.k.a. Wendy's suitcase. Mm-hmm. Not her suitcase. I don't know. These I'm, I'm getting confused. I'm just assuming notes. that Tinkerbell has killed the original Wendy, the original That's darling. So yeah. She's killed Wendy, yeah. darling, and then hides Mick in Wendy's suitcase. Yeah. When Winnie wakes up, she runs to tell Pan. She wakes him up in his tomb and is like, who is this woman? And he explains that Tink was in love with him, and but he loved the original darling, so he loved Wendy. So Tink killed the darling and he killed Tink. So technically Pan could be like some like what great 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 grandfather. Oh god. <laughs> and the no. dad. He could be both. Oh, imagine. <laughs> imagine. <laughs> great great grandfather and daddy all in one hit. Oh dear Lord. <laughs> Go I on. can't even process the t- incest in that. So no, we're just gonna there's, yeah, there's a yeah. lot going on there. But Winnie tells him that she thinks she knows where his shadow is and she thinks it's in the suitcase. We're then in Pan's point of view and Peter's like, well, we got to get out of here, boys. They all get ready and they can't fly to Winnie's home because reasons so no they have to go cliff diving because that makes complete and utter sense <laughs> like in twilight when Bella is having her mental breakdown over the sparkly man yeah Pan is like, oh. we do this and you can go home. Yay. And she's like, mate, I don't actually want to go back to my abusive mother. No um, one is surprised. No one is surprised. They go and dive off the cliff with no consequences and magic takes them home. All right. So we're in Winnie's point of view and they basically walk into her home and she sees the suitcase. Everything's crazy. Her mother is there and there are the hot bunch brownies themselves. And they're looking very cute, ready to eat. Nom, nom, nom. They're like, nope, we don't want you to be king, actually, Pan. We want the twins to be kings. And Pan is like, ah, no. And then just 
starts fighting. I really think it also the twins are like, yo, that's not that's not for us. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. The twins that are life. also like, no, 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 not it. Winnie is basically with her mother, and they're trying to open the secret compartment in this suitcase. It takes her a hot minute, but she ends up finding something in there. It's a box. Honestly, are you telling me that the entire time, so we've had generations (laughs) Generations. of darling women, literal generations, and Pan has never gone, let's look at their house. Never, never. I I honestly don't know how it led to this point, but anyway, we get Pan's point of view. Let's let's see what he's thinking there. Probably not much. Um, We've got... Cass and Bash are like, is Tilly helping the darlings or is she being a cunt? She's obviously being a cunt. We find out that Mary Winnie's crackhead mother actually wanted to help Pan. Tilly actually broke her mind while getting inside of it. Basically, after this, Cass and Bash help Pan kill the brownies. We've got a little action, little fight scene going on there. Our girl is like, I will only give you this if you take me back with you to Neverland. She doesn't want to be there. She doesn't want to be at home, stuck with her crackhead mum. Fair enough, rightly so. She's been through a lot there. Pan reluctantly agrees. And after thinking how great it would be to fuck her all the time, she's like, go on then. We are then in Winnie's point of view. And Winnie doesn't want to leave her mum alone in the human realm. But her mum wants to say because she is well cooked. Winnie then gets weirdly possessive (laughs) of Bash. Like, she's yeah. looking at Bash and she's like, no, that's my man. And it's like, okay, calm your farm. You've just fucked everyone in the house. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't be picky at this point, babe. You've literally fucked them all. Yeah. I thought it was going to be Pan that she ended up with, but apparently not. We will find it out in book two, I'm guessing. Mm. Winnie then promises her mum that she will bring her cloudberries next time she comes to visit. We don't care. Yeet the mum. Oh. They then go back to Neverland. That's where that chapter ends. And then we get into the epilogy. Epilogy! All of them are there. The orgy is gathered and ready to open the box <laughs> that is not Winnie's vagina. And what? they're what? nervous to take on the shadows, but then Pan opens the box and two shadows fly out. And that is where the book ends. Brilliant. They're all going to <laughs> fuck off now as one happy family with multiple shadows. I the think end. she did. They are all off to, to fuck, fuck now. now. As one, they're day. all they're off to fuck, fuck now. <laughs> they're, they're all, all fucking, to like, fuck each other. <laughs> Everyone's like, fucking. fucking off. Yeah. <laughs> And and that is where we leave the Never King. If this was satisfying for you and you (laughs) would like to know what happens next, we will cover book two, but you are going to have to tell us to do it. Shockingly enough, I have have a music reference for this. (gasps) Okay. What so we got? The song is called The Call and it's by a bunch of different people. So League of Legends. To W E I uh, Lewis Lib Fried. Anyway, it's by a bunch of different people, but you should, in fact, listen to it. Oh, okay, cool. 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 Gives you pirate cool. vibes. Gives you like dangerous. Ooh, Luke. Mm-hmm. What a vibe. We don't actually have any fan art for Never King. I thought I'd just say. There's I fucking nothing out failed. there. We literally we yeah, we I'm... we trowed there's through much the out, internet, yeah. and there's fucking nothing. Um, There's nada. Love it. Well, love that it, love it, love it. is Never King. All done. All dusted. Next week, we are back and we are jumping right back into the Throne of Glass series and we are jumping into the Assassin's Blade. Oh, so gosh. if you are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you. If you have read Assassin's Blade, you know the trauma we are about to unpack. And if you've followed mm. any of our other episodes, you know that I'm already crying. Again, for those that might be tuning in and they're like, oh my God, what are these people talking about? We are currently reading the Throne of Glass series and one of our co-hosts, Ellie, is reading it for the very first time. It's just a whole time. It's extremely enjoyable. And again, we hope you tune in for that. 
So yeah. Please do not forget to do the usual things like follow, subscribe, comment, but don't be fucking mean. Otherwise I'm blocking your ass. <laughs> Absolutely. We will block you. <laughs> we will Goodbye. block you. Go and follow us on TikTok, on Instagram. Also, please go follow Taylor on TikTok and Instagram. She is our very first special guest and there will hopefully be more times where she can come and join us on the podcast. Yay! Thank you so much for having me, everyone. Um, I had the best time ever. So, yeah, don't think you're getting rid of me that day. (laughs) I will be back one day. I'll be back. I will be back. I'll be back. Love it. Absolutely (laughs) the best time ever. Love Who knew all. that Tay Reeds was actually Arnold Schwarzenegger? No one knew that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, thank you for tuning in. Fuck it up. Yeah, thanks for tuning wow. in and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.